there, I'm a dude playing Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, and I am also an annoyed dude who is playing Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition. And that's because this is my seventh damned attempt at recording this. I had some issues with recording, and I looked into it a little bit, and I figured out that when you're using your NVIDIA graphics processor, you can actually change the power plan of that, which is a separate power plan to your computer power plan, and you can increase that to a higher performance rather than... Um, power cons conservation. So that means that hopefully this should run far, far smoother. In my test it did, so I'm hoping it stays that way for a full video as opposed to just a minute. It does feel a bit better to play already. Like, I don't drop too many frames. I get frame burst drops when recording, but in the actual game I don't drop too many. Um, but I do notice I lose like 5 to 10 FPS or something like that, which isn't a big deal. Like, I can live with losing 5 to 10 FPS. Um, with this fight, I'm a firm believer of taking the fights in the corner. Because what you can do is you can manipulate the camera, which means that only one guy will try and fight you at a time. So you can see right here, the other Frost, I'm not caring about it, is walking on screen. And I've got a chance to react then. I'm going to double trigger there because I messed up. But, um... So, in this one, I wanted to talk about boss fights. And... A particular one is going to be... The one we're going to face in this mission, which is Bale slash Dagon. I just like to refer to it as the frog boss. Um, with Blitz, keep the camera in the center of the room. If you go in the corner, he'll spawn in the corner and you won't have much time to react to his attacks. Whereas in the center of the room, you get a bit more time. And that can prove very, benef very beneficial to you. Um, but I wanted to discuss like what makes a boss fight good. And I've come up with a few things that I think are very, very important. And of course, this isn't objective. There are going to be differing opinions on this, and it'd be interesting to hear other people's opinions. I think there's a lot that goes into a boss fight. Um, but one of the biggest things for me is it has to be memorable. It has to be like, you know, memorable quotes, a memorable arena. The boss itself has to be memorable. Stuff like this. Um, I didn't actually need to charge that. And that is meant to combine, right? Like, good gameplay is, of course, first and foremost, the most important thing, without question. Uh, if, they, if it's not a fun boss to fight, no one cares about it, right? Um, if I could get this gyro blade down the stairs, that would be pretty great. I hate them so much. I'm bad with them. I've had seven missions where I've practiced this, and I still suck at it. I just hate the gyro blades, man. They're okay as a mechanic, but I don't like them. Uh, get rid of this. Boom. Okay, that's good for later. So, boss fights in particular, memorable. They got to be memorable for a variety of reasons, and I want to point out some specific things that I think are memorable for boss fights in this game in particular. And one of them is Burial, another one is Bale slash Dagon. And the reason is those arenas, there's not much to them. Like with Burial, we're in a sort of chasm type place, and the only thing that's around is Burial. And thus the player is drawn to Burial, the player now focuses on Burial. And the, the same kind of theme for Dagon slash Bale. Because the arena, it is there, but attention is drawn to the boss, right? Be it by the glowing things that are dangling and the boss itself. Like, either or, they draw attention to themselves. And this is huge, in my opinion, to make the boss fight feel engaging to the player. Because that's the other thing. It's got to be engaging. It's got to be rewarding. It's got to not be too frustrating. Which, admittedly, the Dagon slash Bale fight fails in a little bit, in my personal opinion. Uh, just because I hate, like, hitting the danglers because it takes forever and they just dodge you incessantly and they're a pain in the ass. But on top of that, like, add in these memorable quotes as well. Like, if you ask any Devil May Cry 3 player, um, oh, uh, for this fight, I recommend you focus this guy, mostly because it manipulates the camera for you so the other guys aren't focusing you and you can take him out and Mega Scarecrows get pretty dangerous on Dance Must Die. Um... Just because they do a lot of damage. Not because they're particularly hard or anything, but they just hurt. And it's not worth losing half your health to just one move because you fucked up once. Absolutely, you deserve it if you do fuck up, in my opinion. Like, that is the game. That is what I'm like with games. So I'm a firm believer in if you fuck up, you should be punished. But this removes the chance to fuck up. Like, there, I didn't devil trigger either of those hits, and I lost my health as a result. And I think that's how it should be. But yeah, manipulate your camera, keep it in the corner, you can focus the enemies one by one, and you can prioritize. And that is very important in Dante Must Die. In the other difficulties of the game, it's not as big a deal. It still matters, I would say. Um, 
but it's just not that big a deal. There we go, get rid of him. So, back to the boss fights. Ask anyone who's played Devil May Cry 3 any reasonable amount, and ask them to quote you any of Virgil's lines, and I guarantee you they'll have a bunch. Like, like I've got some, like, you shall not forget this devil's power, and you are not worthy as my opponent. And it's just great, because that makes the character that you're fighting feel powerful, feel important. Like, we look at Virgil again, Devil May Cry 3. You've been chasing him the entire game, he's kicked your ass, he's fucked you up, and this is your chance to fight him. And the arena lends itself to that, right? Like, there's nothing really going on in the background, it's just water at their feet, and it's kind of a cave. And there's a little bit of animation to give the background life, and that is very well designed in my book. Look at the um, bail fight, which we'll see coming up, which I'll point out more as we get into the fight, is the arena doesn't take away from the boss. The boss takes away from the arena, he fades into the background. He pushes the focus of the player onto himself, signifies how important he is as a result. And that is why I love the boss fight. It's very engaging. We'll get there momentarily. Just going to clean out this guy. Fail with the gyro blades more because that's my thing. I personally don't like the... Uh, it's not like I don't like it. I just don't care for the puzzle solving in that much. Like, when, once you've done it once, it's... You've done it, right? But, hey-ho. That. This once. I kept getting that trap behind the other one. And I've had so much practice because I've had to record this a billion times. <laughs> but I'm actually pretty decent at it now. Uh, at least that particular part because I remembered it. I would love to hear some people's opinions on... What do you think a good boss fight is, though? Because to me, like, the biggest things are good gameplay, memorable. That's pretty much it. Like, oh, engaging. Engaging is the other thing. Like, it does need to be engaging to the player. But anyway, let's just get this out of the way. Push this. And let's hope I get seventh time lucky. Move this. Hit that right there. Nope, I fucked that up. GG me. There we go. So the biggest things for the boss are don't get as impatient as I inevitably will. You have the danglers that take forever. If you don't get impatient on those and you just keep your cool, they won't be a problem to you. The boss's attacks are very telegraphed. They're easy to dodge. And you just need to dodge them and he gives you a big window for hitting him. So that's your chance to just lay into him and if you just hit him enough and he'll die. Keep an eye on these guys as they will try and attack you once in a while. No idea what triggers it or what triggers the dodge. I'm sure it's just random. But this is the part of the boss fight that's like... It's fine for the very first time. But I think they could have just removed it for Dante Must Die. Because, like, the very first time you face the boss, it's cool. Oh, that's an early stun. I'm surprised at that. The first time you face the boss, it's cool, right? But after that, you've seen him jump you, you know what's happening, you just want to get on the fight, you don't want it to be interrupted. There we go, got half his HP before the first fade out. And this is what makes this boss fight engaging to me, right? Watch this. You see how the background just disappears? It's just, it brings the attention to these guys, or girls, or whatever you want to call them. And that's the engaging part to me. There's not many memorable quotes for this one, but... Dodge that. Bitch. Every time he laughs like that, he's going to attack you. Just dodge. It shouldn't be too hard. You might get hit once or twice. Get hit. Bitch. Can I grab you? Nice. Okay, so he comes now. Gonna dodge, devil trigger, beat into him. And just hit him until he dies. Hit him enough and he's gonna die. Easy enough, right? Boom. And there we go. So that's mission four. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.